Farhan Akira, executive director of Muslim Advocates. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. On Capitol Hill, the House has voted to approve an additional $37 billion to fund the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The measure passed by a vote of 308 to 114. 102 Democrats joined 12 Republicans in opposing the bill. Last year, only 32 Democrats voted against the war funding. A number of Democrats voting against said they were influenced by the revelations in the massive archive of leaked military records published by the whistleblower website WikiLeaks Sunday. The more than 91,000 classified military records paint a devastating picture of the war in Afghanistan, revealing how coalition forces have killed hundreds of civilians in unreported incidents, how a black ops special forces unit hunts down targets for assassination or detention without trial, and how Pakistan's fueling the insurgency. The war spending now goes to President Obama for a signature. On Tuesday, Obama made his first public comment on the leaks. The president spoke at the Rose Garden after a meeting with congressional leaders to discuss the war funding. I also urged the House leaders to pass the necessary funding to support our efforts in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I know much has been written about this in recent days as a result of the substantial leak of documents from Afghanistan covering a period from 2004 to 2009. While I'm concerned about the disclosure of sensitive information from the battlefield that could potentially jeopardize individuals or operations. The fact is, these documents don't reveal any issues that haven't already informed our public debate on Afghanistan. Indeed, they point to the same challenges that led me to conduct an extensive review of our policy last fall. So let me underscore what I've said many times. For seven years, we failed to implement a strategy adequate to the challenge in this region, the region from which the 9-11 attacks were waged and other attacks against the United States and our friends and allies have been planned. That's why we've substantially increased our commitment there, insisted upon greater accountability from our partners in Afghanistan and Pakistan, developed a new strategy that can work, and put in place a team, including one of our finest generals, to execute that plan. Now we have to see that strategy through. And as I told the leaders, I hope the House will act today to join the Senate, which voted unanimously in favor of this funding, to ensure that our troops have the resources they need and that we're able to do what's necessary for our national security. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, the man President Obama tapped to head U.S. Central Command and oversee the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan also denounced the leaks. General James Mattis was nominated to replace General David Petraeus. At his confirmation hearing before the Senate Armed Services Committee, General Mattis was questioned by Arizona Republican John McCain. What effect does this publication of these uh, top or secret uh, communications, what effect does that have on the, com the degree of candor that military officers and senior NCOs in the field who are doing their best to report the best of their ability, what effect does this have on them? Sir, I, uh, I would speculate. But due to the urgency of the operations in a combat zone, it probably won't have much because at the moment they're actually reporting, they're probably more eager to get the truth up the chain of command. Uh, that said, I, I just thought it was a uh, just a, a, a appallingly irresponsible act to release this information. It didn't tell us anything that I've seen so far that we weren't already aware of. I've seen no big revelations. One of the newspaper headlines was that it's a the war is a tense and dangerous thing. Well, I, if that is news, uh, I, I don't know who it's news to that's on this planet. But there is also reports that ele certain elements of ISI are at least cooperating to some extent with the Taliban. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Yes, sir. And could that be because they're hedging their bets as to whether the United States is going to remain or not? Sir, I need to get more current. However, uh, history didn't start at 2001, and some of those same groups we had a relationship with back when we were fighting the Soviets. So it's no surprise to me that there may be some continued uh, relationship there, but whether or not it's because they're working with them, they're trying to infiltrate them, 
Uh, there's any number of motives, and I'm just not current enough to say why. I think, though, that uh, it's hard to wipe the slate clean and just start over at any one point. And clearly, the offensive against many of the people they allegedly used to work with is showing they're no longer friends with most of them. And let me just be clear again. You, you said that you were appalled at the publication of these, uh, that, that the WikiLeaks that just happened. Yes, sir. I thought it was grossly irresponsible. General James Mattis speaking at his confirmation hearing to head U.S. Central Command.